yeah so good afternoon everyone good afternoon uh, mm -hmm. we are at a 4 pm goa program uh, it's live and uh, it's sunday today sunday in the middle of june exactly almost in the middle of june and uh, it's 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 a dry sunday we have a, a few slight showers here and together with that we have our guest dhruv usgaonkar assistant professor mm -hmm. young assistant professor at the university at the goa university uh, who who has been doing a interesting job recently he was speaking at a program explaining why studying portuguese in the second decade of the 20th century third so third decade of the 20th century makes a lot of sense in goa today so i will i will not inter, come in between you and dhruv's ideas my job is just to stoke him on once in a way dhruv over to you yes. tell us why it makes sense tell us why why sadly not many goan students are seeing yes. it that way students from the rest of india sees the opportunity to study portuguese in goa and we goans have i've kind of forgotten it so explain so i so firstly it's, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity frederick to address the people on this topic because i feel that learning portuguese now in the as you said in the third decade of the 21st century does make a lot of sense in goa and in elsewhere as well because firstly portuguese is probably the sixth or seventh most spoken language in the world and it is estimated that there are around 300 million or maybe around 320 million speakers of portuguese in the world so this makes it a global language which is spoken on more, almost all the con on all the inhabited continents of the planet and by learning this language and we go on we should make advantage of what we have at the moment the heritage that we have which we have inherited from the past and use it to make goa a point of contact between india and the lusophone world that is the portuguese speaking world and i feel that there are there is so much that we can do in this regard by looking towards the future to interrupt you dhruv to interrupt you dhruv i uh, want to bring in a small personal angle for those who don't know the few who don't know dhruv usgaonkar is the grandson of the late advocate prominent advocate ms usgaonkar who has who was who grew up in portuguese times knew the language fluently was a was was a writer on many subjects related to indo portuguese law played a crucial role in reminding us of what the law was and uh, writing books and booklets on the same and uh, dhruv has uh, recently complete or is completed or is in the process of finishing sorry i don't know his phd finishing 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 his phd which 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 was tough because he had to go to portugal uh, to to complete it and things like that we have a shortage of guides in goa in portuguese language but anyway that 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 is for later on so now you're saying dhruv that uh, tell us what is the situation of uh, portuguese teaching in goa goa university today because most people may not be aware so at the moment goa the discipline of portuguese and language and the portuguese discipline of portuguese and lusophone studies at goa university is the only department so now it's a discipline under the shenoy goibab school of languages and literature is the only one in the indian subcontinent to offer portuguese portuguese studies at a higher level at the ba and ma level so until recently we also had saint xavier's college offering portuguese up to the second year of ba which is not the case now and until 2020 if i'm not mistaken it was offered at chogule college as well so we hope that it is restarted in the near future so that the language can grow and prosper because as i just mentioned a few minutes ago there is so much that is on offer in terms of career opportunities for the youth who wish to study portuguese at a higher level so which i and, will and elaborate on yeah and yeah yeah, yeah we we'll, we we'll go to the details but it's not only about uh, nostalgia about loose nostalgia about the past it's also about the present and the future because we keep hearing about software companies in hyderabad for example that want want people who have portuguese skills is that right yes yeah, so that's what i want to focus on i'm not focusing i don't want to focus on as you said 
the luzo nostalgia nostalgia but what the language has can offer in the present and the future by giving goan youth or indian youth also a, a competitive advantage in terms of career opportunities in the work in the industry in the workforce so how difficult is it to start learning portuguese supposing like not supposing it's a reality i don't have any connection with portuguese at home i have not been speaking it my parents knew some form of it but i don't know so can i join at what stage can i join assuming i'm 18 so, years old or 19 so the, it can you can one can start learning portuguese at any age actually there age is no age is just a number as uh, the popular saying goes so oh, there are many pe- people who offer there are many institutes also and private tutors who offer Port- portuguese language classes in goa and elsewhere so uh, there are many adults who are learning portuguese at all stages of life so just the main thing is to just have an interest in learning so give me a give me give us a lay of the land in goa what is happening supposing i want a short term course where do i go so short term coach can start learning at uh, at institute kamoish in panjim and there is comunicar institute by nalini disuza and there are many yeah. private tutors as well like linda rodrigues natika de cruz who offers conversational classes in portuguese and there are many others also who are taking who are teaching portuguese for the love of the language and they because they want to promote the language Dhruv, I I am scared in the sense that it's a new language. Okay, it involves vocabulary, complex grammar. How easy or how difficult it is? Uh, in your case, can you tell us your story? Uh, did you have a contact with the language as young when when you were young, or did you pick it up? Did you pick it up along the way, or what? So I started learning Portuguese from the eighth standard onwards in in school. So I did not have any contact with Portuguese before that. So although I used to with hear school? my grandfather. Mustifan High School. Mustifan, that is in which year? In the nineties? No, in the two thousands. Two thousands. Okay, okay, okay. So sorry, so, sorry for interrupting. You used to hear your grandfather? Just to hear my grandfather refer about to the language or speak about it, and the words that are there in Konkani, which are originally from Portuguese. So that's how I decided. I took a decision to start learning the language from the eighth standard onwards. Then, which I continued in higher secondary, in Dempe Higher Secondary, and then in Saint Xavier's College, and then at Goa University. So you're talking about uh, eighth standard, eight to tenth. Then your your pre-university, eleven, twelve. Then your yes. BA, BA in entire Portuguese. No, no. I. I did my BA actually in sociology and psychology, but with Portuguese as an optional subject. Okay, MA in entire Portuguese. Yes, MA in entire Portuguese at Goa University. Yes, and uh, that's that's amazing. So actually, uh, this is a language which you've not you've not spoken as a child or as a youngster. No, you may have heard a bit about, of course. And then we have two thousand at least two thousand words in Konkani which are of Portuguese origin. So so yes. there is some overlap there. but uh, it's amazing how how you know you picked it up so then uh, drew te- i mean just to go on a on a slightly off track tell us about your phd because that's interesting also what was the subject and uh, you had to spend time in portugal to do it not to 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 yes. work on it tell us i i chose to do my phd not in portuguese but in international relations at uh, universidade nova de lisboa that is new Portu- new new lisbon university so the topic i chose and i remember you interviewed me for it in just before i left in 2017 yeah. so i the topic i had chosen was goa as a point of contact between india mm-hmm. and the lusophone world precisely what i want to speak about right now yeah like how so before I, just one question yes. your thesis is written in portuguese yes it was i see I see. So please elaborate. Please elaborate and tell us. Goa as a point of contact. So I feel that we Goans have a lot to gain from this heritage and convert into into an advantage and look towards the future by what can we give to the in terms of heritage instead of 
focusing on the past or our nostalgia so what competitive advantage can the language give to the youth of goa so that is what i want to focus on right now okay yeah so so what, we... what what in what areas does this work how does it work so if we if we took look at that career opportunities available to youngsters by learning portuguese at regional that is a state level national and international level so i would like to start with at the state level and i think the most obvious advan i mean the most obvious career opportunity that is there is the, the legal trans legal and judicial translation of the old portuguese document which are and the translators of these documents are in massive demand as we all know probably every family in goa or every trust or every institution in goa has their old portuguese documents which are handwritten as we know so the all of the archives the goa state archives do have their list of empaneled translators but there is a need for many more of these translators who can translate these old portuguese documents so just last year we had the opportunity to get an internship from the archives and for our ma portuguese students to work at the archives to do an internship there and work with these old documents even in the archives there are so many not just legal and portuguese documents but even historical records which are handwritten in portuguese and i, I believe they are going to be digitized now so even the central library has so many records so just last week there was a news item that these were old portuguese records were digitized but there is a need to translate them and most importantly not most importantly but equally importantly are the legal and judicial records which were written during portuguese time it's a handwritten and which there is a need to translate and the, the demand for this is absolutely massive so i think this is the most important opportunity in yeah. drew what and what say, about uh, what about literary translations because i'm guessing that there would be a lot yes. of interest in uh, not just portugal but brazil and other parts of the portuguese speaking world angola, angola mozambique about indian indian text indian books indian literature yes. and likewise the other way like the portuguese writers are, are totally not known to us no in that sense yes. so what about literary translations Yes, I feel uh, this is also a very important thing, point that you raised, Frederick. That literary translation there is a lot of scope for a career in literary translation, Portuguese English, English Portuguese. So I yeah. think this is something that we can look look into and expand. In, in fact, there are grants given by the Portuguese government to translate their books into any Indian language. now see what is happening is that when it comes to english probably a lot of translations are happening but it's not only yes. portuguese english it is portuguese so many other languages maybe directly yes. portuguese hindi portuguese konkani maybe many languages portuguese marathi in that sense uh, so 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 that is one thing what about software uh, that is that also a booming field yes i will come to that because that is more at a national level but yeah at the regional level at goa at the level of goa there is also a need for portuguese teachers so surprisingly there aren't many that many portuguese teachers in goa as we would expect and there are institutes like for example just last uh, uh, two weeks ago there was a request from father agnel this mba in asagao who wanted they wanted to start portuguese introduce portuguese as a an optional language for their mba students so even like this there are there is a need for portuguese teachers in goa at all levels like right? school higher secondary college and at a level of language teachers so this is also a very important career opportunity now coming right. to software so many of our uh, ma portuguese alumni have been picked up by software companies that are based in metros like Delhi, Hyderabad, Chennai, Bangalore, so Accenture, IBM, then all of these companies have picked up our alumni. So these multinationals, they are doing a lot of business not only with US and all these countries, but also with Brazil. And I would like to mention here that 
Brazil alone, this country constitutes around 80% of Portuguese speakers. The remaining 20% of Portuguese speakers are distributed in the other countries of the Lusophone world, like Angola, Mozambique, and Portugal, etc. Yeah, so Brazil has a huge software industry, from what I understand, and it's all it's all in in local in local language, which is a pro Brazilian variant yeah, of Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and so it needs to be it needs to be internationalized. Yeah, sorry. Yes, it's sorry. not just it's not just software. So I am given to believe that the pharma industry is also booming right now. So pharma MNCs are also in the, on the lookout to recruit Portuguese language experts, Portuguese language professionals like. Bear. So even pharma MNCs are doing a lot of business with Brazil and India. So not yeah, just that's, yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's interesting because Brazil and India have always been at this uh, you know similar level of development. So their needs and our needs tend to tally. You know, I can say this from a personal kind of uh, background because my dad went there in the 50s after he after he had worked for some American engineers, Kaiser engineers in Jamshedpur. And he went to Santos to set up another steel plant to, to work on the setting up of another steel plant there, you know, as one of the workers. So, so like, you know, it's always at a very parallel level of, of growth. Yeah. So it's interesting. So since Sorry. you brought up a steel plant, so just last week, I mean, not last week, around three weeks ago, there was a need for an interpretation assignment at a steel plant for Portuguese English interpretation at a steel plant based in Coimbatore. So this was a European Portuguese assignment. So there are assignments for Brazilian Portuguese as well as European Portuguese. So interpretation is a very important career opportunity because not only is the need for Portuguese interpreters very high, but these come in various, various guises like at the Lusophone games in 2014 so at the then there was the lusophone festival in 2022 both of these were held in goa and i interpreted at the lusophone festival in 2022 for the delegates who were who had come to from the various lusophone countries so they were taken the delegates they were taken the performers actually they were taken on a tour to Reish magush fort and i interpreted for them so were they surprised? Were they surprised that people in Goa, a few people at least still speak Portuguese? Were they surprised? I didn't uh, pay that much attention to whether okay. they were surprised or not. Well, most important for me was to get the message across and make sure that there is no yeah. lag in communication. And it's important to realize that interpretation is a very important, apart from translation, Interpretation is very important in both in the consecutive and simultaneous form. So consecutive interpretation is when there are two parties and the interpreter sits in middle. So the one party stops, then the interpreter interprets and then for the second party. So it is not simultaneous. So simultaneous is what we see with the headphones when the person is speaking and the interpreter is interpreting in a cabin at the back where whether in listeners are speaking with their earphones. So usually, from what I gather, the, a script is usually given in for a simultaneous interpretation. So there was there was an assignment for this kind of interpretation for Portuguese English at the vibrant Gujarat summit that was held, organized by the Indian government in 2022. So interpretation assignments are uh, are very much in in vogue, and the interpreters are very much in demand. So apart from software companies, there are other companies also that recruit Portuguese language professionals. So such as Halliburton, Amazon. So many of our alumni have been picked up by Amazon. And there, are Portuguese, there are Brazilian companies that are doing business in India and Indian companies doing business in Brazil. So even, it's not just MNCs and it's not just Brazil, but also Angola and Mozambique. I remember at the department, we used to get calls by from companies that uh, I think it was a real estate company, if I'm not mistaken, that wanted to expand into Mozambique. And one of uh, there was one youngster from Andhra Pradesh who got recruited by an IT company in Angola for as a Portuguese language 
expert. Yeah. So there is a, so the lusophone world is is an important market. So as, hmm. as you can say, it was just the sky is the limit for people who learn Portuguese. I so also knew a young Portuguese. young lady who got in a job. I think she was from North India. She got in a job with a Portuguese uh, embassy in Delhi in that sense, from, from your department itself, from a department. Yes. Yeah, yes. Aditi, Aditi was. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so the sky is the limit, yeah. Sorry. I want to say also the at the even at the international level there is a need for translators and interpreters. But if you just to look at a different side of it, there's another field that is upcoming which is called localization. This involves subtitling and dubbing, because here localization is because the cultural context also come in comes into picture. So this is subtitling and dubbing of web series movies. Yeah. So here the cultural context is important when when the subtitling and dubbing is done. So subtitling is of course is written while dubbing is spoken. So this is also very much in demand. Like voiceovers, subtitling, dubbing. And it's become so easy, you know, Dhruv, techno technologically today to subtitle a film on YouTube or using some free software tools. It's become very simple. If you know the languages, that is. The yes. technical part of it language. is very simple. You just need to know the languages to do it. I, yes. I remember. So, okay. I re yes. I remember. I remember our fa famous film Natsuya Kumpasar, which is probably yes. arguably Konkani's best films. So they, uh, our friend Badroy Barreto, friend in the sense that I got to know him after the film was made, and we got on very well. And uh, he told me we've done it in French. I said, "What about Portuguese? You have to do it in Portuguese as well." So then uh, yeah. making use of some common shared contacts and all, we put him in touch. And if I'm not mistaken, they have done it in Portuguese. Yeah, that's good to know. Though, though, yeah. though yeah, they've not uh, theatrically released it as yet in the Portuguese speaking world. But like, you know, see the potential, see the potential. I mean, tomorrow if Bollywood, which is already popular in many parts of the world, could actually get subtitles, you know, in that sense. Yes. In so Portuguese. Because there's Portuguese subtitling for web series and movies so this can open up the market the loser the market of the loser phone world for our films and web series and vice versa and vice versa and vice because versa. they have a lot of they have a lot of uh you know uh all these uh series serials and things like that uh which are very popular there no yeah telenovelas telenovelas hmm. yeah so, so in your course, exactly, uh, what is thought group, both at the undergraduate and postgraduate levels at the university? So at our at our course, so we try to keep the syllabus as wide as possible to include every aspect of the language. So apart from the language itself, teaching the language itself, so literature, culture, translation, linguistics, literary studies. So a bit of everything. Yeah. You have you have a bit of films also thrown into a certain days of the week or how does yeah, that so work? Yeah, so we have course at the undergraduate and postgraduate level on Portuguese cinema. I An see. optional paper. I see. So, so supposing I'm joining, say, I mean, not a young me is joining. Uh, what would uh, the qualifications be? What, what would I need to apply? So at the undergraduate level for BA, so we have scrapped the prior requirement of minimum knowledge of Portuguese. Therefore, even youngsters who do not have a prior knowledge of Portuguese can join the BA program in Portuguese, which, which is what I hope our youth will take advantage of and we will get more people interested in the language. So at the postgraduate yeah. level, at, for MA level, at least a B1 level of Portuguese is required due to the higher level. Yeah, B1 in the sense that that is this European classification, what exactly yes, does the it CEFR. mean? So the, the CEFR, the Common European Framework, so they have the A1, A2 and B1 level followed by a B2. So B1 is the third level. Okay. Okay. So some amount of uh, comprehension, some amount of speaking skills yes. for the postgraduate level. For the postgraduate yes. level, these yes. are full time courses, not roof. So it's a little bit of a yes, like yes, you have to be a full time yes. student. That is a problem. Yes, these are BA 
so there are full time courses which are offered in person there is no online or part time option available yeah. because yeah. since it's not a let's say so since the course requires a certain amount of attendance and yeah. an in person teaching so it is important that it, the course be offline and full time what would the what would the age of your older student have been at any time in the past older student i don't really know but we did have used to have many in the like over past. 50 over 50 over 60 yes yes easily 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 yes they were, i don't know exactly but we used to have many in the past so although not now recent in yeah. recent years yeah. i know some of the persons who have done me yes, uh, and I'm and sure. have gone on to teach and all that no i know i know so so uh, mr kuto from aldona and things like that probably, yes. probably. i yes. don't know when he did it but uh, so that means there is no maximum age there is no no disqualification no. on maximum age i could be 80 and i could join no. so i still have a future yes okay yes. okay okay so so drup we were talking about the immense potential okay but in spite of this uh, goan students seem to be a bit reluctant to take on the risk students from the yes. rest of the country are far more adventurous hard working yes uh, some of them come after studying at places like jnu or something and some of them are 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 raw are, are fresh as there are many of yes so most of the non goan students who join the ba portuguese program at goa university are freshers amazing no amazing like see i'm saying yes. i really admire their sense of adventure adventurousness see you all guys get beaten in the sense that you all get the beaten both ways they'll say okay uh, students from the rest of india are coming but at least they have that adventurous sense to say we are willing to take the risk huh yes but this time in the batch of first year bear although they have not started it i'm given to believe that there are at least four goans i okay. if i'm not mistaken so okay. they are they, they're going to start later this week but hopefully yeah. this will inspire more goan youth to take up the language and what is the intake group at the other. ba and ma level intake capacity 19 each 19 each 19 19 ba and ma and ma yes so so tell me something because uh, because indian languages have much more alphabets would it be easier for a native speaker of any indian language whether it's hindi or whatever marathi or whatever to to get the portuguese sounds right is that correct yes yes uh, with a bit of practice yes it's it's not that difficult for I speakers see. of indian language for speakers of indian languages as against a speaker yes. of english now who has a limited number of sounds we have yes. in our, in our, huh? in our yes. knowledge what what are the kinds of questions when you gave the talk recently i think uh, last fortnight ago what were the kind of questions that people had for you after the talk so questions as in if i if i remember correctly it was mostly about i don't if i'm not i don't think there were many questions though i don't remember at the moment but kind of prospects that are available and yes. uh, things and yes so so, so for more on detailed explanation on what prospects are available i think goa after after the misunderstandings of 1961 uh, for a good 15 years after that closed its eyes to the portuguese language although it was so important in our past it was it was never a mass language let's accept it but it was yeah. a language of history of of culture of music to a certain extent konkani was always there but uh, it was also the language of our libraries of our archives of our courts of our courts of our land records but after that we've kind of turned a back seat towards it and what i find interesting is that every few years uh, some journalist will come from the west whether it's readers digest or any magazine and lament the fact that portuguese is dying in goa okay and i've been seeing these articles for the last 20 30 40 years maybe and uh, so far they always keep saying it's dying it's dying it's dying but it's still alive in that sense so yeah it's so still alive and it needs to be it needs to prosper and this uh, and i hope that um, there will be more goan youngsters who come to learn the language and take yeah. advantage of this heritage that you speak of and carry it forward and turn it into an advantage yeah not looking at the past alone but especially looking at the future yes not looking at the past okay, because the past whatever happened in the past is gone so but what is in yeah. our hands is the future 
and the actions we take now we are going to shape our future therefore if we have more students coming to learn the language whether it's at the uni school university college or even at for private classes so the more yeah. students that come so there there will be more teachers of portuguese there will be more important there will be more translators of those old portuguese documents and they are in desperate need of being translated if i may make one small observation i don't know whether it's well founded or not uh, see what i notice is that people in goa want to have a want to have a test a trial a taste taste of uh, you know portuguese and how it works so for instance they want short courses they want part time courses they want online courses they want they want something free yes. like a, like you know in that sense so so there will be hundreds if not a thousand of them who will sign up for a free course on portuguese lot of interest in it but when it comes yes. to giving time commitment you know whole time attention there is a little bit of a deficit there anyway just an observation yes. Yes, yes hopefully then after this trial round after this trial or demo they will come to subscribe as you can say in gamer terminology subscribe to the full version how difficult was it for you to learn roof for you to learn the language and master in it and become a, an assistant professor in it how difficult was it i don't i never found it very difficult really i i, I had the, always had a knack for languages i see i see So, so how many which are the others you are interested in? I have learned. So, I have learned quite a few European languages I, and uh, Indian and uh, I French. I have a Delf B two in French. Mm. I've learned Spanish and German as well. And while I was in wow. Pune, I did one level of uh, experiment, as you can say, you know, a demo version of Mandarin Chinese and Japanese. Wow! My goodness. my goodness but i don't so remember the, anything of that whatever yeah if you don't use it you lose it probably that's yes. there but it will come back if you want to tell us tell us something about the department how many staff uh, i know professor delphine is there from yes. uh, post from portugal but tell us something about uh, the depart uh, the, the, the 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 school right in the school yes. shenoy goibab school of languages and literature it is yeah. uh, all Your the discipline. former Yeah, my discipline, the Portuguese and Lusophone studies. Right now, we have six or seven teachers teaching only. Yeah. So apart so, from so, me, six others. Apart from you, six others. Yes. And uh, yeah, getting to do a PhD in Goa in in Portuguese is tough today. One would uh, because there are no guides, no, in that sense. One yes. would have to affiliate with some department in Portugal. Yes. as of now but tomorrow the situation could well change once yes, once yes, your generation yes once your generation gets in place so so what was the the findings of your of your thesis in that sense what what was the conclusion of it were so you I optimistic had to change that, my topic okay pardon were you optimistic that goa can play a role or, or finally what was your topic no then i had to change my topic to india's cultural diplomacy and soft power in portugal to work at the level of india okay that's interesting to, yes to so I, ultimately i ended up exploring how indian various forms of indian culture are promoted in portugal i see so i just moved away from goa interesting both both topics are equally interesting in that sense because both are looking into the future yes and at a totally different level from what we understand like you know uh, lisbon delhi or lisbon panjim equations no yes so But is is that, india yeah. is india alive to the situation is india looking at it actively yes i believe it is because india portugal relations have been an up I and mean, an upswing in the past let's say 6 or 7 years and this is another place where uh, not just brazil or lusophone africa but even in portugal even if you look at the portuguese market there are around since the the portuguese prime the former portuguese prime minister antonio costa visited india multiple times and the indian prime minister also visited portugal and there were many mous that were signed in various fields at least around 8 to 10 different mous and since then there have been various 
conferences taking place in various sectors like in one marine sciences and like the former steel plant that i mentioned and there have also been subtitling assignments that have been coming all all of this in european portuguese and i believe and i feel that our youth have to take advantage of these job opportunities that are coming up not just in from the brazilian or the african market but also the portuguese market true where the sky is the limit true what you say is very true because dhruv uh, both uh, narendra modi and uh, antonio costa had a very good personal equation whatever the political differences that may have been there uh, they had a good personal equation plus brics is there no i mean like brics yes uh, the kind of brings brazil india plus the other countries together and uh, they been they been they they are the same level and they they have same similar problems similar issues lots of potentials you know lots of uh, yes. opportunities so so that 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 is also there the booming of course India, i remember I believe, yes yes sorry sorry go ahead go ahead no no you can no i i remember i was just going to say you know that when uh, antonio costa visited uh, visited uh, goa and india delhi and and uh, panjim someone came up with the suggestion that uh, you know uh, that his father's book be translated so the indian embassy in portugal got in touch with us and we had to depend on some american in texas who knows the language to translate o sinio di ira uh, as the the sign of wrath and uh, the prime minister of india gifted it to the prime minister of portugal as a gift we managed to do it on time they gifted it in delhi uh, you know so so like there is the equation today is different from the equation that was there say 60 years back or even 50 years back where today you're looking at a totally different reality unfortunately sometimes because of the colonial context it has it has certain connotations and uh, yeah. you know it but we need to go beyond that i'm sure yes we need to go beyond that and realize that the past is the past so what has happened has happened now now what is in our hands is the future yeah and we need to look towards the future like for example yeah. one of our since you mentioned the book sinu the sugnu da era yeah one of our master no, students carry on carry on yeah one of our ma students this year who passed out so she did a masters dissertation on the translation of usignu da era yeah and since you mentioned brics also i believe that the booming relationship between brazil and india the economic relationship is thanks to brics and their subgroupings of basic and ipsa so brics has been greatly beneficial for the india brazil economic relationship yeah. true true that's true so so while while we are on the point uh, you know if if uh, we just got one rea reaction coming in from anjali norona who ask whether there are any thoughts to continue your a2 to a1 to b2 particularly online particularly online i think anjali is based in bhopal yes so you know i don't know i know it's tough for y'all uh, drove because yes mainly because we have a full workload of ba and ma at the moment yeah. yeah but you know really i feel honestly see we were playing around with some of these online courses and all that uh, you know two people who were volunteering to teach and there is a huge pent up demand at that level i don't know how yeah, you manage it it's, it's a nightmare it's a nightmare too sorry sorry yeah no there is a huge demand for language courses as anjali is saying you know and in fact again we hope that we are hoping that more students from all over india come to learn portuguese so that in return we have more uh, portuguese teachers because we there is a need for portuguese teachers all over india so the so most you students are, so you are saying group that you are saying that if they come here there is a good chance that they are going to pick up the language and go back without problems yes yes it has happened before so we have had students who have come to learn they have picked up the language they have completed yeah. their masters and they have gone on to get successful careers so so we have had students from one girl from uttarakhand who came to do her ba so without a prior knowledge of the language she did a ba in portuguese now she is placed in concentrics 
I know this uh, Gulf kid from Goa who was born and brought up in the Gulf. Never had any Portuguese knowledge. He came. I forget his name. He came and immersed himself into it about four five years back, and he was so good at uh, at it that he was actually speaking and using it. You know, using the language. So, yeah. of course, some people have a gift with languages, but sometimes it's also the effort. In terms of uh, finally, you know, kind of uh, making. the department more visible i know a lot of initiatives have been undertaken can you talk yes. about a few yeah. of them not so, department so sorry i'm yeah. using the wrong term yes, it, now, it it's a, yes. yes now it's a discipline yes yes now it's a discipline within a school within a school yeah under the care of school. school so the so school we have been, the school covers been... the school Pardon? covers all all languages all languages and literature yeah, and Yeah, Chennai Goa 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 covers. Goa. Yeah, tell us all about six Chennai languages. Goa. Okay, that so is all the former language departments. So English, Marathi, Hindi, Konkani, French, and Portuguese. The yeah. former I, departments are now disciplines now, within the school. No, also Sanskrit, Sanskrit now, comes with. No, Sanskrit comes within the school of philosophy. Sanskrit philosophy and Indic studies. Okay, okay. So six languages are in Chennai Goa Goa School. and all of yes. them are called disciplines yes so you all are in the portuguese discipline yes so we have been trying so to effort you... uh, but, pardon carry on carry on no same question no since you what yeah. efforts so we've been trying to create visibility for the discipline for the program so i myself i have gone to i went to various schools and to try and reach out to the youth at various higher secondary schools and colleges i gave them give talks on exactly this what i am talking about right now anyone there have been various articles that have been published in newspapers in english and in marathi but of course we need more can be done because we need to reach out to the youth not just in goa what but is, also in various parts of india what is their concern and what encourage is their, them to learn it i'm trying to understand Pardon? what their concern is what is their concern are they thinking that do we have opportunities in this field it is a bit narrow it is hit and miss you know what what are they afraid of really to to take the plunge so mostly it's like uh, go on your i they prefer to they go, tend towards the so the mainstream careers so i wish i knew myself so what's holding them back so even i'm trying to find out and see if this can be overcome in some way to encourage more youth to take up the take up learning the language at higher levels and so we which is quite tragic take... which is quite tragic in the sense that uh, our full uh, understanding of the world is rooted through the english speaking world so so yes. whether we are speaking with uh, with with the uh, portuguese uh, speakers with europeans with spanish speakers in latin america we we will go through the english speaking filters so that blocks yes. our ability to deal to deal on a one on one basis we need we need a we need a middleman yes. in that sense which is which is sad which is sad in the area yeah, because I, I, the portuguese language even the accessing the portuguese and brazilian quizzing is being done through the english language filter as they say so if even the portuguese learning portuguese can open different cultural avenues like cuisine and so many other like access to portuguese and brazilian cuisine through the portuguese language the brazilians have know. a huge huge interest in indian yoga indian spirituality oh, yes, absolutely you know indic uh, indian indian films whatever it is no but somehow it, the the connections are not happening directly yes so here again and, uh, as as an other avenue like you said for that our youth can take up by learning the language yeah. so there's so much that can be done actually you know But just one has to take the plunge yeah as a as a journalism young journalism student i once happened to visit the indian embassy in bonn and i was surprised to realize that uh, of course they have specialist in german and i'm sure are 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 uh, ambassadors and, and you know uh, others in the staff are learning foreign languages but there's not enough of it happening so they had a summary of the 
German press and it had come from the British embassy and it was in English. You know, so we are dependent on someone else to talk across the world, which given given our own abilities is a shame in that sense. I'm sure I'm sure Indians and even by implication Goans could do far better. Especially the smaller states have a window to the outside world because they are forced to look outside. So I, yeah. I had come across a figure that Goans have written in 21 or 22 different languages across different points of history. So we have no excuse for not knowing, you know, yeah. another language. And especially something like this, which has so close connection with us. Having said that, any yeah. last thoughts that you'd like to share with us that I should have asked you or did ask? So just that, uh, like... No, we hope to get students from not just from Goa, but from various parts all over the all over the country, like various parts of India coming to learn Portuguese because that's the way the language will grow and prosper all over the country. So there is a demand, there is a growing market, and there is a need of people who will be able to work in this field as Portuguese language experts in various sectors, in various occupations, various professions. Not just translate commercial translations, interpretations, legal judicial translations. Yeah. So I hope that there are youth who come to learn the language from various parts of India and and help the language to prosper. I, like I'm I sorry about this group. Yes. Pardon? I'm sorry about this group, but I think a discussion interaction like this is going to increase your workload because there is pressure. For yes. for a simultaneous online course, you know, and I felt very strongly that way that yes, there's you know, a huge I, demand for an online. There course. is a huge demand. It's going to be a huge tough demand. job to implement because, as a university, your main commitment is towards the formal courses, towards your yes. own your own yeah. priorities. But having said that, you know, if something could be done, because uh, see, the main problem when when I was a student at Goa University in in its initial year, 1985-87. We were all part-time students, and it was a great boon because in those days, after the CPIR, no Center for Postgraduate Instruction and Research, education at the at the at the university level was still a part-time thing. It was meant for teachers. I wasn't a teacher though, and we could uh, we could attend in the afternoon. So it was really really fun, like no, because we didn't have to give up our jobs mm. to attend university. So these these suggestions are coming in. Of course, we don't expect an answer from you straight away, but please do no, consider. No, the answer someday. would be to the answer would be you know, to encourage your youngsters you know to learn the language so that after they they finish their masters and we will have more portuguese teachers okay. who will be able to offer these courses that okay. that are being mentioned whether it's a1 a2 b1 b2 online courses also so the more also, students that come to learn the more teachers there will be in the future also <clears throat> a lot of your your programs are actually open to the public from what i understand is that right? Uh, some of your programs, not the not the classes, but uh, but your your extracurricular activities and all are open yes, to the public. Yes, that's true. Yes, they are. <coughs> and and do you all have uh, film screenings at the Goa University twice a week, or or how does that work? I saw it in your in your in your syllabi that uh, you know they were talking about film screenings on Tuesdays and Fridays or something like that. I don't know who it was. Okay. Okay. Are these are, are the films which are shown subtitled? Subtitled? Yeah, I don't know which film you are referring. Okay. okay Was it okay. the Portuguese? No, but, or... but if you all if you all screen a film, would it normally be subtitled or would it be in yes, Portuguese? Yes. No, subtitled. Okay. No, the reason I'm asking is because subtitling is a is a huge way of learning a language. No, which is yes. why what they say, they say that these smaller European countries they are not dubbed. Their, their voice is not translated, but their subtitles are. So yes. as a result of it, they are learning the language while they are watching, no? While they are yes. watching. It's and a listen. very interesting way to pick up the language. And also, yeah. as I mentioned earlier, it's a very it's a it's an upcoming career opportunity. Subtitling but and dubbing. I myself was very surprised to see how simple subtitling has become in the last two, two or four or five years. You know, the tools that are available are so simple. Yeah. Anyone can yeah. use it. You get subtitle editors, you get free tools, you can do it on YouTube. Of course, you need the language skills. That is yes. where we are handicapped. We meaning people like me, not you. 
but people like me are handicapped because we don't have the you know sufficient language skills having said that a lot of food for thought thanks to everyone who interacted thanks so much uh, we've had 20 people consistently watching this video and i'm sure many more will watch it uh, once it's online after the program thank you drew for spending your time thank your you sunday so much afternoon for the opportunity it's my pleasure it's my pleasure because i missed your talk and i said I, this is something which is worthy of capturing and sharing with a wider audience uh, all the very best i know you're yes. starting a new academic year in the next week yes all the very and best to you in the, in the upcoming academic year like so hopefully this will encourage more youngsters from all over not just from goa but from all yeah. over the country to take up learning the language there's a plethora of career opportunities available for those who wish to take up this language at a higher level and if you say it opens a part of the world it opens yeah. so many different career opportunities i know i know how seriously you all work and uh, sometimes it can be it can be a little bit discouraging when people say oh you all are getting more students from outside of outside of goa then then inside the outside of goa then inside goa and also you know these 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 things can be discouraging because there are factors beyond your control but while i was uh, talking just one thought came to my mind the hindi speakers seem to be very confident in running portuguese what about south indian uh, students they are they also showing an interest do they feel the confidence that they can do it or it's mostly so people who had so far mostly from among non goan students it has been mostly from the hindi speaking belt so okay. we have had two from pune two from andhra pradesh okay so south andhra also you have no one yes. from kerala or or say uh, mumbai or vasai all these areas where no so far no. we have not had any okay so no okay. at that i know of there might have been before i joined okay. but i don't know so when uh, how how long more to to complete your thesis and viva so i'm submitting at the end of this year okay all the very best with that thank we you so much we look forward to our first to our first homegrown uh, homegrown professor i mean sorry phd in portuguese after dr eufemiano miranda yeah no and and uh, yeah I think so. and uh, mrs selma was there mrs selma and uh, yes. dr miranda has done the phd and and professor delphine is uh, completing shortly also by portugal yes so all that is there Thank you, Drew. Thank you so much. Thank you so much Looking for the forward. opportunity. Do share, do share any updates and information that uh, that we can pass on. We'll be very happy to. Uh, all the very best. Sure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. So much.